How we doing, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. Happy Friday. I uh, did get a chance to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 yesterday. I uh, have to say, everybody's talking about, you know, the fact that it's not going to make any money, etc. But on Thursday night, uh, there was no seats left in three or four different theaters. And it was playing in like five theaters. So uh, everybody's talking about the fact that it's got the same numbers right now as Ant-Man. And that may be true, but I think this one has uh, longer legs than uh, than Ant Man will. I think that uh, I think people eventually will go will go see it, and I think it'll I don't think it'll make a billion dollars, but I think it will make at least five or six, uh, especially internationally combined. But uh, now, as far as this film is concerned, I'm not going to talk uh, any major spoilers here. Mostly what you've seen in the and you know the uh, the trailers and things to that effect. I'm a big fan of sci-fi, as everybody knows. As I, you know, that's the majority of what I write uh, is sci-fi. Of course, I've done some Star Trek stuff. Everybody knows all that, and uh, so this kind of fits right up my alley. I remember when the first Guardians movie came out. I, you know, it was almost like it wasn't as good, obviously, as Star Wars, but it had that same kind of feeling for me. And every time I went to the movies, I would look for where it was playing. And you know, after I finished a movie, I would go to Hop. And where I'd find Guardians, and I'd wherever it was in the, the in the, the actual plot, I would just sit down and watch it till the end. I must have done that a, like a dozen times, man. And I I saw that in the theater a bunch of bunch of times. I just couldn't get enough because the energy was there, the camaraderie of the characters was all there. It was exciting. It was funny. It was there. There, there was chemistry between the characters. Everything that you wanted in like a group type superhero movie science fiction movie it was all there i mean it was lightning in a bottle as everybody said and then when the second one came out um you know it had it had its moments but the whole ego thing didn't really work for me you know then all of a sudden you know peter was godly and you know we, he turned to a pac-man at the end and i'm just like what is going on here what is first of all in the comics ego isn't anything like that ego is a living planet not and so it's, it was already off off the rails for me by the end, but in the middle of that, it still held some some good characterization and there were some good scenes, um, like the scene with Yondu uh, and Rocket together. All that stuff was really good, and uh, you know it had some good stuff with Peter Quill and and Gamora and and I love Gamora. I think she's great. So uh, yeah, in fact, you can see we kind of I've spent now hundreds of dollars here. So, Here's my Peter Quill. Uh, obviously, they're from the other movies, but here's my Peter Quill. Uh, I think they got his face pretty good. And I don't know if anybody's noticed this, but they actually stole the gun from uh, Black uh, Black Hole. If you haven't seen the movie Black Hole, uh, it was done in the early 80s and uh, by Disney. So I guess if you're going to steal, I guess you're going to steal from your own company. But they they had the guns like that uh, star. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was one of the droids. Uh, then, you know, here's Gamora from the, I, I, uh, I did like the costume in this movie, but I'm still partial to her first, uh, costume from the first movie. I like the heels with the hole, uh, and that kind of thing. I did like their uniforms quite a bit in this film. Uh, they match the comics perfectly. That's how they're, except for the boots, which I like the boots. I don't like the boots in the comics, to tell you the truth. So, uh, they had like flaps. And uh, these were more military style boots. Uh, so I liked, I liked their costumes a lot in this one. It just didn't work for Nebula too much because of her skin color. It was already blue and she kind of, you know, fell in. That's why I like the red in this one. Uh, I lost her uh, holster. But uh, yeah, they did, a, they did a good job with these figures. But again, these figures are all, you know, 200 and something dollars a piece. Um, so you can see I don't have... Uh, now the rocket I may get when it comes out, and I like the uniform with, that was Rocket was in in this one, and uh, and my Mantis is already out of order. It's uh, it's on pre order, hasn't been released yet. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about this movie now in correlation to the others. So I felt like the second one was a mixed bag, and I felt the same way about this one. I like certain scenes in the in two, and I like certain scenes in this one. Uh, but neither one of them, as far as I'm concerned, lived up to the first one. 
And this one's going to be a tough one to rewatch because, and I'm sure you've seen in the trailers, there's a lot of animal cruelty in this one. And that right there makes it a tough watch because it's very dark. Uh, where the first one didn't really have any darkness. They had a, a lot of stuff to get over as far as characters were concerned. You know, the stuff that they, they were they were introduced to one another. They had a big baddie that they had a... Um, that they had to confront. They were in it for money to begin with. And they found each other and they found strengths in each other, which is what makes that first movie great. And they pulled off those strengths. Um, in the second one, you know, again, Rocket was pulled off to Yondu. So we didn't get a whole lot of him uh, with the rest of the group. And the same thing happens here again. So I'm not going to even say why, but there's a lot of scenes where Rocket is not with the group. And he his, his whole essence and everything else, that kind of he's kind of the glue. You would think it would be Star Lord, but it's not. It's actually uh Rocket that kind of holds everybody together. And without him there, his presence is his non presence is felt. And I, I don't know if I would have I don't know if I would have done this this way because of that. Uh, so again, let's talk about the good. All right, the good is the fact that the whole team is back together again. All the actors are back together. You can tell that these guys have a friendship off screen. When they get on screen, they're just magic together. Okay, Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, uh, Bautista, uh, Palm. I'm not can't even say her Palm K. I can't even say her last name. You know, Vin Diesel coming in with the with with the Groot's voice, uh, and of course Bradley Cooper rounding it out, and Craglin is kind of off to the side. Uh, another good addition with this was Cosmo. Cosmo was a very big character in the comics, and of course she was thrown in in one of the other movies, but this one she had a, a larger role. She's a dog. <laughs> She's a Russian dog, and uh, I didn't really get the Russian accent as much as I kind of wanted uh, in the voice because she has a voice modulator. And, uh, and she's telekinetic and psychic. So we did get to see a lot of that. And uh, I really liked that addition. And I liked the little banter between uh, with her and Craglin. Craglin's still trying to use the arrow for that he's got from uh, Yondu uh, throughout the thing. And, uh, you know, so there was a lot of good as far as that's concerned. The action is very good. In fact, there's this one scene in the hallway that everybody's talking about. It's kind of like the scene... You know, a daredevil in the hallway is the same kind of thing. That it's not. There's obviously lots of cuts. It's not a single action like it was in Daredevil. But with them all using their powers and fighting abilities, etc., and it going and the camera just going all between them, good stuff. I mean, that's that's what I kind of want in a Guardians movie. Uh, what I also liked in the first movie that we really never got again is uh, dog fighting. We ne we haven't gotten any real dog fighting. Uh, in in these movies, we had a very quick one here. I don't even know if I call it a dogfighting, where the, uh, the the different pieces of the ship kind of broke off and were shuttles. And uh, so I missed that. I love dogfighting, and that's why you know stuff in Star Trek and stuff in Star Wars, specifically with the fighters. Uh, you know, I love that stuff, and, and I don't get enough of it <laughs> really. Uh, we did get some of it in Mandalorian, but that's about the extent of what you know I've seen dogfighting in a long time. But uh, so that's really the good stuff. The plot itself isn't really a good thing for me. I, I didn't find it compelling because it's it was so dark. And it was kind of like I go from quest to quest to quest to quest. So there really wasn't, you know, a whole lot of character driven stuff that the plot was carrying the characters along instead of the other way around, where the characters were making decisions that were affecting the plot. Um, so I, I kind of missed that with that. So let's talk about the meh. So uh, there's some stuff in here that I, I felt was completely out of place. Uh, number one, if you're a fan of Adam Warlock from the comics, you are not going to get Adam Warlock that you know in this movie. He was completely restructured into a child he's one of the most 
the strongest characters in the Marvel Universe. And here we had him acting like a child. It was really weird. There was really no reason for him to be in it. I understand what he got. He had an arc. And of course, he was introduced in one of the, in uh, volume two uh, at the very end. Uh, I think they just mentioned his name. They don't, there's not the actor. The actor is fine. Uh, in fact, he's totally beefed up for the role. Um, I wish he had the cape on throughout the entire thing, but he doesn't. Uh, I almost wish he had the bare legs uh, uh, from the comics uh, because I was kind of thought that was kind of a Greek type of looking feel. Um, and I kind of felt like he was almost a Greek God. Uh, so yeah, we don't get that here. Instead, we get this bumbling idiot, uh, who was, you know, supposed to do a certain thing and in the beginning. He almost destroys the one thing he's trying to get. I, you know, I don't understand any of it. Uh, so yeah, that was unusual. Uh, there's another scene, uh, where the, the first quest, uh, where they're in this, um, I'm just going to say that the, I'm not going to say what happened. I'm just going to say the, uh, uh, the atmosphere it's in. So they're in this, uh, space station and that, I think that whole area of things that could have been cut out. There were a couple of funny scenes in it between, you know, Drax and, and Mantis that I thought was really good banter. Um, but besides that, you know, I thought that the that, that didn't like that scene was kind of goofy. Um, the other thing that, and you're going to be surprised by this because I love Gamora, but she was completely out of place here because of the fact that they brought a Gamora in from Endgame. And if you guys have seen my video on Endgame, uh, I, I hated Endgame with a passion <laughs> because the there are so many plot holes in that and the time travel just did not work. It, it, the time travel just messed everything up. And now we got Gamora in here who was a time travel. Why, why didn't she go back home? And if she didn't go back home, how then now we have a, we have a, uh, a dichotomy of, of, uh, of time because if there, if she ever goes back home, then Quill could never meet her later on. Right. So, you know, unless she's, unless they're saying, okay, well, it's a, it's a different timeline in the past. But look how confusing we're all getting. You know, it, she just did not need to be there. It wasn't the regular Gamora. She didn't, she didn't act like the regular Gamora. And she just felt out of place because we were used to the Gamora from the other movies. And this one wasn't that. Uh, there is a, for a couple of cameos. Uh, you know, you can look out for um, uh, Vesta Sloan makes another appearance here. Uh, I wasn't as happy with the Groot here because the Groot is kind of beefed up in here as opposed to the thin, lanky Groot from the first movie. I like the first design the best. Of course, Baby Groot was always good, too. But I, I didn't like the beefed up group. Um, and then, of course, we, uh, we talk about the animal uh, cruelty. And every time some of those characters were on the screen, I was just like, I, I just can't get over this thing. Uh, especially the bunny. So the bunny has, I'm going to show a picture of it, but uh, the bunny has a clamp on its mouth. So it can't, I don't know how it even eats. And, uh, and then on top of that, it, they, they cut the hind legs of the bunny off, which you see several times, and then put spider legs on it. So it's a cyborg. All these things are cyborgs. And uh, my heart just bled every time I saw that thing, you know? And uh, I don't know. That's why watching it again, I was like, it's almost going to be torture to watch that thing again because... It's so dark. And, uh, you know, and then the otter has uh, mechanical arms. So obviously they cut the arms off the uh, off the otter to give it mechanical arms. It's just, like I said, animal cruelty up to the, the ends here. It's crazy. So I don't know. It's going to be tough to watch that movie again because of that. You know, where the first one was more happy-go-lucky. And yeah, they had a villain. And yeah, they were going after a certain thing. But there wasn't this bleeding heart situation. Which other people might say, look, you know, it's it's the movie was there to bring out the feels. And if you have a dry eye by the time this movie's over, you're just not even human. Uh, so, you know, it definitely pulls the heartstrings. But you just like, you know, sometimes it's 
the torture thing is just a little much. I mean, this I like horror and almost got to that horror type of feel. But there's a movie, a horror movie called Martyr, uh, and I dare you to sit through that thing and and not be cringing. So yeah, that's uh, of all the horror movies I've watched, that is the the creepiest thing, and that thing still haunts me. And I can sit through pretty much anything, but that one that one is just a little bit too too far over the top for me. And that's how I kind of felt here. So uh, yeah, it's so it was it's, again, it's a mixed bag for me uh because it did have some good scenes uh it is worth seeing it's obviously one of the better uh mcu films that have come out since uh and i'm not going to say endgame i'm going to say infinity war because i hated that game (laughs) so once infinity war it was all downhill for me uh and so this is you know obviously way way up there in comparison to you know shang chi i liked half of shang chi um and if you know me, I, I loved uh, Doctor Strange. I, everybody else hated it. I loved it. Uh, I thought, you know, Elizabeth Olsen knocked that stuff out of the park. So for me, that that had that fun. And we had a villain that we could empathize with. This had a villain that we couldn't empathize with. We just wanted that guy dead. <laughs> that guy just needed to die. Uh, you know, James Gunn's wife God, makes an appearance. Uh, she's also in... Uh, in Peacemaker, uh, she was also in Suicide Squad, so she, yeah, you know, he's going to keep her, his wife, working. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's that's pretty much it for me. So uh, again, good, bad, ugly kind of thing. So uh, it wasn't great; it was good. Uh, not sure about rewatchability. Uh, definitely watch it once for sure, just for the camaraderie. And everybody says this is the last one. That's how it's been advertised. However, and I'm going to give this away. On, uh, so there's two um, post-credit scenes. I'm not going to tell you what the post-credit scenes do. They're nothing major anyway. And uh, uh, at the end, it says Star-Lord will return. So it's kind of like the James Bond thing. So it's only that character. Uh, the standout character for me in the whole movie was actually Nebula. Nebula was or was acting like a leader in this thing. She has, I think she has the biggest arc uh, because of course she comes out from being a jealous villain in the first movie to being a hero. And that was the other good thing too, is that each one of the characters was selfless at one time, uh, at least once during the film. So each, you know, each one of them got their time to shine and be that hero and and show how much they care about the others so that right there you know is it shows the heroic side and that's what we really need to go back to um is our heroes being heroic and we get that here again the film is just a little bit too dark for me and the the plot line is kind of non-existent um you know where we knew that this was building like the the first guardians movie was building into the Infinity Stone saga. This is building into nothing because it's over. So it's uh, that that's my two cents there. Well, let me know what you guys think. Did you guys like it? Did you think it was just okay? Uh, is a movie you're going to see multiple times? How did you feel about the animal cruelty thing? Let me all let me know what you guys think about all that. Um, and as far as a rating, I'm gonna I think I'm along with everybody else where it's like a seven. Um, you know, where the original garden is more like a nine for me. <laughs> and I think even with even Dr. Strange for me is like an eight. So it's, it's, it, you know, it's, so it's below that. And again, I think it's right on line with volume two, because again, I had certain things I liked and certain things I didn't like in each film. So, uh, also, uh, I'm going to be, I just got the first draft of the video in for, uh, Destiny Aurora. And we, I'm just waiting on the video to launch. So as soon as I, I have to make some tweaks. But once I approve that, I'm thinking I'm on the 10th. I think I can, I can get this thing locked down by the 10th, and uh, and launch. So then I'm going to put the link uh, for the Kickstarter below. Click on that, and you can click get notified about when we launch. And this way, it'll send you an email saying, "Hey, this launched. Go take a look at it." But you're going to be able to get the audio book. Uh, the digital copies of the graphic novel, uh, the four book series, 
and I, or you get printed ones and I sign them. And uh, I'm going to be putting my orders in for at least the, I'm waiting on the, the hardcover for Tales of Ravenor, the Iron Witch right now. And, but I think I'm going to put my order in for the paperback. So I'll be able to get those out shortly. Uh, Lords of LA. Uh, I got a, a few more, uh, I got one more cover to do and I got a few more pages to get done. Uh, so after this one, I should be able to launch that almost directly. Uh, so, and, uh, Tales of Ravenor, I'm going to, you know, I think the only thing that's going to hold me up right now is just getting the, uh, the printing of the, uh, the hardbacks done. Uh, cause I should have the soft covers, uh, probably within the next couple of weeks. So I could probably start fulfilling that within a couple of weeks. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. I will be checking, um, everything, uh, all my DMS and, and emails, etc. Uh, you can also reach me through uh, Facebook on the Destiny Horizons page or my personal page. It's, I'm not hard to find. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great weekend. And again, uh, you know, I, I hope you guys go out and see Guardians of the Galaxy. At least we make that one successful uh, for uh, the cast and crew who probably did a really uh, a lot of work to get that thing out. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye-bye.